Nothing can separate us from his love. When you start to realize your identity, that nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, you are in union with him. Your mistakes can't separate you. Your rebellion can't separate you. Because the grace of God is an ever-increasing power. It's, that is the true superpower in the earth. And out of the increase of his grace, we ultimately discover who we are because we discover true permanence. The true permanence of God, the eternal realm. And then we start to realize that the natural realm and the stuff that we struggle with is very actually temporal. It has no substance of being, doesn't have any lasting reality to it. And that's really the word. It has no substance of being. <laughs> People are striving to find their true being, their true sense of being. Well, that's really what life's about. Do you have a true sense of well-being? Do you have a true sense of inner being? You're truly grounded. You're truly centered. You're truly connected with reality. And you can truly be yourself. Or do you have a sense that what you're doing is a bit superficial? has no meaning, but you're going to try anyway because you're going to try to find that meaning when you buy more stuff or you get more money or whatever. <laughs> right? This is how the world operates. And people go through the, the motions of this for an entire lifetime. And then they physically die and then they'll find out that it was all a waste of time. And then they'll meet Jesus and Jesus will manifest his great love to them and it'll all get sorted out in the end. Every knee shall bow in worship and praise to him, as that love is, fills all creation, and the Lamb is at the center of the throne, broadcast and displayed in the earth, made visible. Oh, someone say, you're saying your divine nature, amen. Yes, and I'm saying your divine nature also. That's what the whole Bible is talking about. That's what the whole New Testament is talking about. That we've been identified with him. That he has brought us into union with him in sonship and we carry his nature. Jesus Christ is the expression of the Father. The exact re representation, the exact representation of his being and the express image of his glory. Because we are completely identified in him we're expressions of his glory. We're expressions of his life. So we can't be shy any longer in identification for our sake, for God's sake, and for everybody else's sake. Let's pull out all the stops, guys, and completely identify with who we are in Christ. We are the body. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of divine union. We are the body of divine nature. So when the world looks at us, it sees divine nature. But if we're not identifying with who we are, what does it see? Well, it will see someone who's confused. Right? Because you've got this thing pulsating within you that is glorious, that is wonderful, that is magnificent, but you still think you're something other than what that is, what is pulsating and vibrating and emanating within you, full of divine power, full of divine emotion, full of divine passion and love and goodness, full of substance and life and reality, ready to broadcast into the outer world and transform the earth. That's what we are. We're broadcasters and transformers of the glory of God. Radiators of goodness, radiators of love, radiators of divine nation, divine, divine power. And as we walk in this reality, we are very bold. As we identify with who we really are, how can you be anything but bold? Right? Completely identify with who we are. Born of his spirit, his divine nature, rich in Christ, containing his life. And we're not speaking from an arrogant thing here. We're talking about something that God has done, God has birthed, that is, a, is an actual reality. We're, we're just learning to identify who, with who we are. Therefore, we can act and live and be out of our true sense of being with some substantial substance. Because again, any other identification has no true sense of being. Has no, it doesn't have a root. It's not rooted in anything other than the outer realm, which is fading away 
and you know what I mean you're just going to feel lack something's lacking and you're lost and you're not connected but when you come into your true sense of, sense of being and identification all that disappears and you're rooted you you know you've got purpose you know something good is happening and you and this is for every this is the body of Christ we are the body of Christ the whole body of Christ is Christ is this this is if if you've tasted of the goodness of God the powers of the age to come if you've experienced the rhema word of God, this is for you. <laughs> this is for you. Because the rhema word is the living word. You know the, the wonder of God that is beyond the five natural senses. You know that, wow, there's something beyond what meets the eye, what I can see with my eyes and experience with my physical emotions. There's the dimension of God. And it's wonderful. So you know this, and this is what we've been awakened to, and this is what is increasing in us, and this is where our identity is. Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 3 through to verse 4, His divine power has given us, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Wow, everything we need. And Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. So his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. And that would be in an abundant measure. In Ephesians it says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask, think, or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. So, according to his power, so why don't you just pull out all the stops and fully identify with him and allow him and yourself to experience everything pertaining to life and godliness beyond all you can ask, think or imagine. Super abundance of life in all aspects. Rich in love. I mean rich in love. Rich in forgiveness, rich in grace, rich in the power of God, abandoned in the power of God.